Hey, thank you for the like and subscription. Here is my promised video. Let's create the index.js file in the main directory. We are going to use the location from where the script was called. Let's call the FS library for reading and writing the files and we are going to use it to watch for the directory. Let's pass the path applied variable as an argument, set recursive to true to watch subfolders as well and pass a callback function. We need to pay attention only to change events so we return if it doesn't satisfy. Also, we return if the file extension is not the one we need. Let's make some optimizations because why not? We will prohibit the parsing of the same file if it happens during 10 milliseconds. Now we can try out to run the script and see what happens. As you can see it successfully works. Now let's require the utils in index.js file, use its method parse and proceed to its creation. We will use process.pwd once more to get the location of the function call and will require our compiler. This module returns an object containing the parse method which takes the path to the source file and tries to tokenize it. If something goes wrong, we tell the user, sorry bro, can't compile. Let's create the parser.js file and require the nearly JS library. In order to use our grammar in module experts, we will need to compile it using the command prompt. Just type in nearly c, the file name, minus o, and the output file name. As you can see, now we have a main.js file in the grammar folder. We can feed the instance of nearly parser with our grammar and then feed our input file's content to the result. We will only return the first element of the parser's result because there might be a couple of them and we don't want to have issues with it. In the newly created index.js file in the compiler directory, require the fs library and our parser.js. Create the read file function for better readability and set the char set to utf8. Our model experts return a function with a string as an argument and checks if a file path is provided. If no, then we got entries from the file. In both cases, we will parse the content plus a new line character at the end of the file. This will matter later. Now, when you log the output and run the index file, you will see that we get a very detailed information about the entries. You can see the line numbers, offsets, and the entry types. Let's create the ast2.js file which will recognize different types of entries like numbers, strings, keywords and much more and will return a javascript equivalent of that entry. In the exported function we need to make sure that our statements is not undefined and if it is not an array, make it an array. We will loop through the statements and use the switch cases to check the type of the statement. For now, let's just focus on numbers, white spaces and unhandled expressions. Require the AST to JS in the utils model, pass the AST content to it and return the content JS instead of the content. Also, we can console log it right here to see what we have so far. Hmm, I'm a little unsatisfied with the result. Let's add a white space after every single number. We will need to restart our script in order to get the updates. As you can see, there was nothing hard in it. When you have a proper vision of what you want, your mind will always find a way for you to get it. This is just a tiny part of what is coming next in this series, so make sure you stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.